I just recorded the recipe for the end of this video and I just thought I'd do a little hello for the beginning of this video. I suddenly um, watched the video back and suddenly realised there's not a lot of me in it, a lot, a lot of chopping and a lot of vegetables because I really wanted you to see what's going on and how easy it is to make this. Okay, so this is turkey mince with a topping of uh, sweet potato flavoured with horseradish and mustard and Worcestershire sauce and pumpkin oil, if you have it, um, and smoked paprika. Um, please enjoy. I hope you get to the end of this because at the end of this video you'll find the recipe and how to do it. Um, if you give it a go, let me know. I'd love to see some pictures and some... Oh, and tell me what you have yours with. I had mine with... <laughs> baked beans with horseradish oh, do you know I'm sorry it sounds really weird but it is gorgeous okay so enjoy the rest of the video and I'll see you at the end what I have here and I know you won't be able to see my face but I really want you to see this are some sweet potatoes which I've scrubbed but I haven't cut the ends off yet some carrots which I've scrubbed but equally haven't cut the ends off yet some onions um, and some mushrooms I'm using these mushrooms because <laughs> I all like saving monies. They were 48p because I got them the day of the date they were supposed to be um, sold. And they are awesome, so mushrooms, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steam these sweet potatoes. First of all, I'm, while I'm talking, I'm gonna de-edge them. I have sharpened my knife. Can you see this knife? I love this knife so much, but the handle's starting to come off. But I just don't want to get rid of it, so I'm gonna ask Mr. G, my lovely husband, if he can somehow make it better. Um, but this knife is just my perfect, it's very sharp and oh, I love it. Anyway, I'm going to cut the ends off and I have a bowl here just to put all the waste in there. Cut the ends off and I'm going to chop this up into small pieces, keeping the skin on as you see because a lot of nutrition under the skin and even though I'm going to mash it, um, I'm not adverse to having lits, little bits of... Um, little bits of lumpy skin in there. If you don't like that, please take it off. Uh, I like it, it's nutritious and it makes me feel more healthy. And if you know me, you know that's never a good thing. So there, so I'm just gonna pop those. And actually what I'm popping them into is the top of a steamer. But if you don't have a steaming pot, and I was given one by my, my wonderful mom, who's no longer with us, but she's such an awesome, awesome person. She gave me that as a, just as a, present I think it was a Christmas present and actually my sisters may have got the same thing we used to get the strangest Christmas presents from my mom and I hope my sisters don't mind me saying this but some of the re really weird ones I can remember getting a, an indoor grill before they um, were even popular I think my mom used to watch that well-known um, QVC and just get a Christmas present from there. So we had some very strange things. Not that an indoor grill is strange, it's really useful. But at the time I was single, I was living in a, a the worst bed state of my life with literally water dripping down the walls. Um, so it was just pretty horrible and I didn't even have any room for a bed. I used to sleep on the settee with a, a sheet on every night. Put the sheet on, put the sheet up in the morning. So I didn't even have room for that. But anyway, this is, I don't know what I was talking about. This is digressing. So here we go. This is going to be sweet potato. And I'm going to use the sweet potato mash. I, I'm one of those weird people, I guess. And hands up who doesn't really get off on potatoes. The only potatoes I really like are really, really crispy um, roast potatoes that Mr. G makes. Because there's more crisp, less potato. So that's what I quite like. But if I go anywhere, I'll order sweet potato fries. Um, I guess that's from, I got that from the States, which is really, yeah, it's not unusual now, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. And I also like to the, <laughs> dip them in mayonnaise. Oh my God. My, I eat like a child sometimes. I'm actually quite healthy, but you know, who knows? Uh, so, and I don't like, like rice. If I go to, um, not that I don't hate rice, I just don't, it was not something I would order. Um, if I go to a Chinese or Japanese or Cantonese or whatever, I never order rice, I always order noodles. So anyway, I prefer sweet potato. And I'm sure you can find lots of people talking about 
um, how healthy it is for you, carbs, slow release, etc. But actually, I'm doing it because I like it. And, um, and the reason I am steaming is because I want to mash it when the sweet potato is cooked, very soft. Um, but I don't want it to be wet. And for me, sometimes if I boil potatoes, then when even when I've drained them, um, they will be, they can be just a little bit too wet for what I want. So I'm actually making a lot of these potatoes. So if they have any excess, I will make them into fritters, which again, I will show you. I know this looks weird, but I have actually scrubbed it. So it's not anything other than just the, the clean skin on there. Don't be scared of vegetables. Ah, that sounds really weird. <laughs> Don't be scared. Don't be scared. You'll find them running down the hall. Uh, no. Uh, you also find it very... Do you know I get very philosophical when I'm chopping? It's probably, <laughs> probably not a good idea just watching me chop because I, my mind goes to very strange places. But I often hear people go, oh, my children don't eat uh, vegetables because, oh, so I have to give them crisps every day. And you really don't have to. You know, your kids will eat whatever you eat. And um, my mum used to say, back me up, ladies, my sisters, this is not a restaurant. <laughs> I'm cooking one meal and if you don't like it, you go hungry. And we never went hungry. Four, four daughters never went hungry. Anyway, I'm going to finish chopping these and then I'm going to pop them in on top of a pot of water with a lid to steam. And I think I shall start off by letting them steam up for 20 minutes. Give them a little stir, see what's happening. And then test them with a fork, see if they're very soft. And then if they are cool, I'll take them off the pot of steaming water and let them cool. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So just bear with me, I'm just gonna turn around. Because I've already got this on here. It's almost like, it's almost like I planned that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my carrots and onions and mushrooms. Again, chopping the ends off. These have all been washed, I said you've been scrubbed actually. And these are gonna go into the turkey mince. Uh, why turkey mince? I've no idea. It was on sale at Aldi. Um, and so I thought, oh, do you know what? Let's just have that. I'm cutting them up quite small because they're going to go into the mince. So I don't want like giant pieces of crunchiness. Um, this is very much a comfort thing, isn't it? You can tell it's, what date is it today? Oh gosh, it's, I think it's October 24th. And... It just feels like winter already. I mean, come on guys, let's have some sunshine. But I sort of hibernate when it gets to this time. I can't bear the dark mornings, dark nights, and I'm very much a stay up late person and stay in bed very, very late, which uh, is probably not a good thing when you want to have a career. Um, so. <laughs> Maybe I should have been a drag queen. I don't know. That would have been awesome. If only I had any talent. Uniqueness. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway. So, just chopping these up really fine. And then I shall show you about the rest of the chopping. And then I shall get on with it. Um, maybe I should just shush. And not not talk. Except it's <laughs> two things. One, impossible for me not to talk to. It's really boring. Okay, so that's that. Onions. Now, if you want to know how to chop different chops, just put in these skins into the bowl that I have beside here. Um, if you are looking for lessons on how to chop, I do have a beginner chopping session. I'm not a chef. I don't know quite what that is. I think anybody who can cook can cook. I so admire. I have so many... Um, chef crosses crushes on some of the, the chefs I, I watch and oh my gosh I just wanna I just wanna sit in their house and in their kitchen and watch them for hours and days but but I'm not a chef I'm just a cook who just happens to like cooking which is probably good. So I'm gonna cut these up. Check out the video it'll show you how to chop in different different ways. I'm going for sort of like a medium chop on these. Don't waste anything. They get that oh yeah Every penny counts, right? Hmm. It's all about pennies and flavour. 
<laughs> Maybe that should be my new catchphrase. Catchphrase. <sighs> Pennies and flavour. Never mind the soup life. Okay, so I'm going to put two onions in there. Onions are awesome. I was recently giving. Um, oh, that's a big chopper. I was recently giving um, some show onions, show winner onions by a friend of mine who's an elderly gentleman who I adore, and um, the onions were like this big and. <laughs> I think I posted a couple of pictures on my Instagram page of these onions. They are awesome. And leeks. Wow. And I spent two hours <laughs> chopping these onions up to freeze because they are awfully wonderful to freeze. So if you see any onions in the sale or selling off or leeks or, or even carrots or anything, um, just look up how to freeze them. It is worth it. Because, you know, sometimes you know, these things can actually be really expensive. For something that's so basic, you, you'd wonder why. And I think onions are something that I use. Would I say every recipe? I would. I would say every recipe. Right. So that's what I'm doing first. And then I'm going to get this pan. And I'm going to put a little bit of the my family. Let me smell this. Oh, God. So good, you can smell the pumpkin. Pumpkin oil. Now, don't, ooh, see how thick that is? It's almost like a syrup. It's not sweet at all. It's very savoury, very smooth. So anyway, I'm putting some of that in. Um, if you don't have pumpkin oil, don't fret yourself. It's just about, you know, what I do have. It's just that I happen to have some of this pumpkin oil. I'm putting that onto heat, then I'm going to pop these in to, um, to cook a little bit longer. Let's see if I can move that up here. Hi. Um, to cook and soften and then when they're softened I shall show you what they look like and I shall uh, prepare the mushrooms as well um, so oh actually what I'll do is I'll prepare the mushrooms now shall I because I want to show you this don't wash your mushrooms guys so here we go don't wash your mushrooms mushrooms wipe them down okay if mushrooms are really really absorbent um, I just realized that's right on my breast let's move that down <laughs> Um, so just give them a brush off, okay, make sure the dirt's off them. And this thing that people do is getting the stalk and throwing it away, what is that? Flavour and money, no, sorry. Chop your mushrooms, like a very, quite a medium chop. It is easy if you take the stalks out to chop them, and then you can go back and chop them like that. But please, 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 please don't throw them away, gosh. So I'm going to chop the, mush chop the mushrooms, get the onions and carrots in the pan, start to saute them. And so what happens is you heat the oil up, turn the, the pan or the oil down to very soft, gentle heat, put the carrots and mushrooms in, stir them every now and then, add salt and pepper. Um, and I'm going to add some of this paprika, smoked paprika. If you don't have that, I don't know why I did that accent. If you don't have smoked paprika, just use paprika. Um, she said, I had this in my cupboard and I thought I need to use this. Um, and then once the onions are sort of translucent, transparent, then you've got to take them off and I shall see when that's done. Okay, so this is the, these are the carrots and onions when they first gone into the saucepan. And uh, now I've turned the heat down to low and can you see, and I've added salt and pepper. And can you see how the pumpkin oil has made the, give a nice green hue to the, to the onions. I shall come back to these when they are uh, reduced and translucent. Reduced, that's liquid. Translucent and a bit soft. So I'll show you those in a minute. Onions, carrots, and actually I added the mushrooms after the, the onions and carrots were, were cooked part two. So can you see how translucent those onions are? Let me get a close-up smile. Okay, oh, it's a bit steamy. Hello. Um, so that's what they look like. They're sort of... The onions have still got a little bit of crisp to them, so they're not soft, soft, but edible, definitely. I won't eat that, because <laughs> I won't be able to talk. Um, so what I'm now going to do is take these out of the pan, and then put the min mince in, and I shall be back in a second. Okay, so this is uh, the mince. Can you see underneath here? I've just browned the mince off. I put another tablespoon of, of pumpkin oil into the pan, and just browned the mince off. Quite a, well, medium-high heat until it's all brown, then I've put all the vegetables which I've taken out back in. Um, and can I just say, I didn't salt the turkey mince when it was cooking because I put two tablespoonfuls of, um, oh, 
Worcestershire sauce in, and that's quite salty, so make sure you, that's why you have to keep tasting all the time. Uh, and the, if, you, if I like that, I like that for flavour, um, but it is quite salty, so I'm just going to give this a taste with a clean fork. Hello. Oh, perks of the job. Oh my gosh, so good. I might just eat that now. So I'm going to add a few more things to this. Um, and then I'll sh next time I see you, I shall be um, putting the mashed and the potatoes, which are still steaming here. Um, but I'm going to put a, a tablespoon of mustard in here. So let me just do that. Uh, so I've just put one big teaspoon of tablespoon, I said last time, teaspoon of mustard in there. And you can see it bubbling away and it smell of vision. So mix that all in. Gosh, it's going to be fabulous. And this is, you can see this is not a gravy, a gravy thing. I could make this into a gravy thing, but actually I don't want to. Because what I will be doing is, <laughs> it's going to be really saying, I'm going to eat it with some baked beans on the side. Yes, that's who I am. Comfort food in front of a good film uh, with baked beans. So I'm going to let that cook down for another 10 minutes. And then I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? And then <laughs> I'm going to take the mash off and then I am going to mash everything and bring everything out and show you how to put it together. Okay, good. Bye. We're at the mashing stage. So I've, I've started mashing because it takes me ages because um, I've got a bit of arthritis, but you know. Um, so I've started mashing just with a masher. Nothing, just with a masher. <laughs> um, so just take as long as it takes to get it to the squidginess or softness that you want, the mash that you want. Like I said, I don't mind having a few lumps in there. That is probably because when I mash, there are always lumps in. When Mr. G mashes, not so much. Okay, so. But I want to show you um, and add a little bit more flavour to this. Um, so I've got some horseradish. Again, Aldi, little, awesome. Um, let me just adjust this thing here. Oh, I must get something to make me look more professional. Seriously. So I have got um, a spoon. And I'm just going to add a little bit of horseradish to this. Like I said, I got this from Aldi. No, I got this from Little. <gasps> so I'm going to put half a tablespoon in there. And, and then just get that another mash with, with the mash up. A little bit of pepper. Give it a squidge round. And then I've got to assemble. Oh, so lovely. I love food. You know, I can never be... Oh, I can never be not foodie. And luckily, my kids are foodies too, which I'm, I'm very lucky about. Okay, so I've already put the mince mixture into the container, into the pot. What is it? Lasagna pot? Whatever you have. If you don't have one, make it into two. It's not a big deal, is it? Um, and I've just pushed it down nice and flat and then I'm going to ladle these on the top and without disturbing the mince, the loveliness underneath, I'm going to try and push these down nice and smooth. Now I thought maybe I was making too much to potato, but it turns out I'm not. <laughs> so um, for the fritters, sweet potato fritters, I might have to make some more, but who cares? So let's just get a, another spoon to do that, to squish that down. Okay. Nice and smooth. Now what I'll do is I will uh, let this cool because I'm not having it till this evening. And then I shall pop it, pop it into the oven with covered in foil for 30 minutes number 180 to 200 centigrade and then I shall take it the foil off for the last 10 minutes um, so it maybe gets a little bit crispy on the top once you take the foil off if you want to and you can be super 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 indulgent top it with some cheese when you take the foil off this started out as a quite a healthy meal and I'm sort of made it, making it the end of it into oh, but it's gonna taste good. You don't have to put cheese on it, obviously, and I'm not going to because I'm gonna have beans with mine um, on the side. But you can have anything you like with it. But it's a perfect meal to make in advance because you could make this um, a 
couple of days in advance and pop it into the fridge. Um, you could make it a long time in advance, <laughs> a long time in advance and pop it into the freezer. And, and it will freeze for up to three months once it's cooked and then just take it out, defrost it and pop it into the oven, 180, 200 with the foil on once it's thoroughly defrosted. Um, and as long, make sure that it's really hot in the middle though when, when you reheat something like this, okay? And that's it. So the next time you see me, I'll probably have my pajamas on and I might be giving myself some of this because I'm planning to watch a film um, and that's my oh, bliss in life, watching a film and eating good food. So see you later. Please subscribe. Please um, ring the bell. I shall write down the recipe at, right at the end of this and let you see it, talk you through it. If you have any questions, email me. I'm not quite sure how you contact me through YouTube. No idea. Ask my kids. They'll know. Um, but see you later. Bye. Well, here it is from the oven and it's just been bubbling around the edges and it just looks so gorgeous. So I'm just going to get myself a, a nice big dollop and let you see the inside of the... Oh, so steamy and hot. Can you see all that gorgeousness? I think the perks of the job, <laughs> perks of the chef, are getting all those crispy bits all around the edges. So that's what I'm going to have. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, watch out for the recipe. Probably said that about four times but <laughs> see you later let's talk recipe for the turkey mince and sweet potato shepherd's pie so here's what i used i had 500 grams of turkey mince um two large onions which i chopped quite uh, medium sized um i had three medium carrots if you don't have three medium to use two large you've seen the video you'll know how many to have if you've only got small ones in the, in the cupboard don't panic you know it's entirely it's a it's a recipe that you can change and adapt to put lots of things um mushrooms i had one pack whatever they are and i chopped those including the stalks please i had one teaspoon of small paprika paprika if you don't have this don't panic substitute it for paprika even if you don't have paprika and you have a little bit of other seasoning pop that in it's fine it just changes the flavor profile don't worry two tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce I hope I spelled that right this is something that you should have in the cupboard or well, I think everybody should have in the cupboard anyway because it adds such a lot of thing I use that so much in my cooking pumpkin oil four to six tablespoons depending on obviously when you're breading off things how much you need if you don't have pumpkin oil because I use my family pumpkin oil use a vegetable oil or even change the put the flavor profile use a chili oil use a basil oil use be brave you know try it out salt and pepper that's to taste please taste all the time sweet potatoes i had i think three medium i think they're medium slash large but you'll see how many and i chopped them up um into medium pieces and kept the skin on that's entirely up to you and i steamed them so that they wouldn't be too damp when i came to mash them Horseradish, again, I use one heap teaspoon. Use whatever you um, have for flavoring. Don't need to put it in, but it's it's fabulous. And one heap teaspoon of mustard. Um, I use Dijon. Grain mustard is fine. Okay, here you go. I chopped the veg, um, which I think you saw me. <laughs> Not a lot of me, a lot of my, my knife. But hey, that's, that's what I was doing. I wanted you to see what was happening rather than look at my face. Um, steamed, I steamed the sweet potatoes. I'm reading this through my phone, which is really odd, so I'll look at the paper. Um, I steamed the sweet potatoes um, until they were soft. They took longer than I always think sweet potatoes take. They took about 30 minutes. So have them, you know, prepare them in advance. It doesn't matter if you steam them and leave them to go cold and then mash them. It's absolutely fine. It's just that I was doing it in one large thing. Sorted the veg until they're soft and the onions are transparent and the carrots just sort of should still have a little crunch. Then add the mushrooms because the mushrooms take less time to cook. I used pumpkin oil. So I heated the pumpkin oil up first and um, then put them in, then turn the heat down to salt them. I add salted and pepper. And then once they were all soft and translucent, I removed them from the pan, just put them in a bowl or something. Then I put a little bit more oil into the same pan. And this is a flat, pan you'll see on the video um like a sort uh, fry i don't want to say frying pan because it's not as a saute pan but hey you know um i used a little bit more pumpkin oil and i browned the mince off 
that just browning just means making sure that there are no red bits, no raw bits. So it's sort of partially cooked most of the way through, okay? Then I added all the, the vegetables back to it. And at this point I started, and I added salt and pepper um, and tasted here. Please taste, 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 taste. Don't just leave it till, till here. Taste, taste, taste. Um, obviously not raw stuff, but, you know, um, when it's being browned off, that's probably okay. I added the paprika and the mustard to taste and the Worcestershire sauce. I didn't add any more salt at this point because Worcestershire sauce is quite salty, so it's up to you, okay? Um, then that once that was all sort added and everything, I left that to uh, sort of very low heat for about 10 slash 15 minutes. It's entirely up to you. It won't overcook, which is really good. Um, then away from all this bit, once the sweet potatoes were cooked, I mashed them um, as fine or as not as you want. I added the horseradish. Oh, and I also what, I haven't put on this thing, have I? I added, um, sorry, I added uh, the the mustard to the mince. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, I haven't written that down. Um, I added the horseradish, and then I started to assemble. Okay, and you saw how I assemble it. How I assemble it. So just pop it down on into the container, and then um, put the sweet potato on the top. I heated the oven to about 200 centigrade. And I cooked the whole thing covered in foil for uh, 30 minutes. And then I took the foil off and gave it an extra 10 minutes. And it was delicious. And I, like I said, I had mine with baked beans with horseradish in the baked beans. Give it a go. Okay, thanks for sticking this far. <laughs> Bye, enjoy your day.